Medical flow is the term used to define our surgical plan for maximum patient safety and efficiency. There are several components that factor into this daily planning. One of the main goals is to coordinate tasks in a manner that minimizes or alleviates inactivity for the doctor. Teams should strive to have the doctor in surgery as soon as possible. A good goal is to be starting surgery within 30 minutes after check-in is completed. The first step towards this goal is quickly processing the patients that are received for surgery. This means promptly recording patients on drug logs, writing identification cards, and preparing pre-medication supplies. The next step, handling the patients, should be done as slowly as necessary in order to decrease stress. Extremely fearful or aggressive animals should be delayed until other patients are processed and put into cages. The patient examinations should not be rushed but should be abbreviated to simply evaluate fitness for surgery. Technicians should begin drawing drugs as soon as possible while assistants finish with animal processing, cleanup, and sweet setup. We also place our patients in a particular order. We do this to attempt to control hypothermia and also to decrease fasting time for pediatrics. We place all pediatrics and very small or nervous patients at the beginning of the surgical lineup, leaving patients less susceptible to hypothermia for later in the order. Typically, dogs have surgery first, then cats. Feral or free-roaming cats are held until last. Technicians will also judge patients by the projected length of surgery. For example, mixing male and female patient surgeries makes it possible for the team to keep pace with the doctor, as males are much faster surgeries than females. The ideal rate of surgical flow entails the doctor is never waiting for the next patient to be ready for surgery. This requires the next patient already in place on the second table prepped for surgery at the time the current surgery is being closed. This enables the veterinarian to change gloves, acquire suture, and begin the next surgery with no downtime in between. It is very common and easy for teams to fall behind their surgeon, and when the surgeon is waiting, it is a poor utilization of time. The rate to strive for is six to seven surgeries per hour on average. Meeting this goal will require different coping strategies for different clinics. Some of these strategies include communication from staff within the operating room to staff prepping concerning surgeon progress, for example, the doctor is closing. Some clinics may be set up with multiple tables and multiple doctors and staff may need to communicate with each other about where the next surgical patient is to be placed in the OR. Many clinics don't break for meals until a certain number of patients have undergone surgery, for example, all dogs or maybe two-thirds of all patients of the day. Be certain there are plans for completing packs throughout the day in order to continue surgery. Some clinics will have a float person tasked with packs as well as assisting others where needed. Direction and delegation of tasks by the technician helps maintain the flow as well. Examples of these tasks include obtaining and returning patients, administering subcutaneous fluids, assistance in monitoring all animals in the prep and operating rooms, and preparing animals for recovery from surgery. The technician sets the order of the animals and monitors the pace of the surgeon. Maintaining the appropriate flow is a team effort. It requires team members who help each other and work well together, as well as a technician who is able to lead, communicate, and organize. Consistent and efficient flow helps the animals by shortening pre-surgical waiting times and allowing them to enter recovery mode more quickly. A consolidated and organized day also keeps team members focused and less fatigued. The correct medical flow ultimately allows more patients to be accommodated in the same or less time.